So, last week we did make begin the fingering of number 10 here. I finished that 30 minutes ago. I have to be honest with you, and I will. And we're going to make the beginning of the fingerings of number 11. And then we're going to practice Symphonia number 10. And then we see how much time there was left to be playing the other Symphonias. So, without further ado, I will take the computer mouse as I did last week. And that's one of the parts I really enjoy to reduce myself. And it's very funny if you watch it later <laughs> to see that uh, picture of me getting smaller out of the way of the music, as it should be with a musician, I think. Also for the live streams we're doing now, they're being uploaded on Saturday. I might keep that schedule. I might as well switch to just uploading them uh, right after the live session. That's something I don't know. Again, things will be changing next year. I hope for the better. But for now, we're focusing now on the Symphonia number 10. Okay, there we go. There are some passages I really want to discuss with you because I remember saying last week that this was one of the more easier, easier part, uh, symphonias and that might be so, but still technically spoken, there are things that are not to be found in the other symphonias and really interesting. Even not in the partitas, I think. So I just play very slowly. It's for me a first sight reading, except from the fact that I've made the fingerings. So um, for those of you who are new to these live sessions, I'm not performing, I'm not playing, I'm just practicing I'm from scratch. I've never played the symphonias before. There we go. Oh, here, very, very careful with the releases, very relaxed. Same thing for here, because the left hand has to take over the middle voice and then release very soft, very slowly for the lower note, which is difficult. Typically what one would like to do is this, which doesn't work on the clavichord. You have to be very careful with the release and very careful with the attack. Really the only way to, of doing that is by, by releasing very gentle and going in a very in a, in a round way, so in, in a circular movement to the A. It's a longer way, technically spoken, so if you make a circular movement to the A, you, your way is longer, your path is longer, straightforward would be shorter, but sh straightforward would, would have no ending. If you release a note here at the top, and you go straight to the A, there is no point of ending. You have to force your arms to stop moving. And if you just judge the circular movement to be one octave, you don't have to be afraid of ending because the end of the movement is the end of the circular movement. That's actually something that helps me a great deal. And can cause wrong notes, of course, because if you misjudge, you have bad luck. You have to take a risk in life. And last thing I would like to say about this passage, you, can, you can't pre uh, pretend as if nothing happens. So it's all a compromise. All keyboard, not all, but uh, passages like this on keyboard, you play three voices, which is unnatural actually. We should play only one voice, maybe. But if you do it like this, you cannot hide the fact that you're making a jump. So you better do it very uh, controlled. And then most of the time people, people won't notice. Or even make advantage by giving an accent. sharp a little bit too sharp. 
also hear it. I cross hands here. The polyphony will benefit from that. Because this is the left hand, this is actually the middle voice goes over the, the top voice. And just by following that, it's easy to do, so I rec would recommend to doing it. Sorry. Jump to the fourth finger. Don't go for your second finger and then try to manipulate your hand for the fourth finger. Just make the jump. Because you have a natural, ac natural accent, which is great. So it always helps. Fingering should always help the um, expression. And most of the time, the, the articulation and the accentuation. I forgot to write a one here. Also here, this C half note, really keep it. Even if you're not hearing the sound anymore. Here the, the first finger right hand just goes over in the second finger because of course obviously this figure has um, priority to the long note. This is a really awkward scale in the left hand and there's no good fingering for that. So you start with C. I might shift to the, no, you won't see it, but I try to the uh, second studio here. <laughs> Let's see, it's only for the left page. Let's see if I can switch this a little bit. Oh yeah, it's, it works. I will go back in a minute to the, to the right page, but it's here. Yeah, you see it uh, here actually. Because normally you have put the first finger under the under the third finger, obviously because of the F sharp here. You wouldn't like to have your first finger on the F sharp. But then you have this first finger on the fourth sixteenth note of that one quarter note, which can give a natural accent. And something I don't like to do, and actually you, that you can read about, is that if you change your hand position, or if you go with the first finger under another finger and the right hand that's the other way around, try to do it on a, on a strong beat. But here it's not, not possible because you have the F sharp. So you have to hide a little bit the first finger. Of course, on instruments like the harpsichord and even an organ, you wouldn't notice. An organ is delicate because of the articulation, the note sounds longer. But here really you have to lift the weight of your first finger and I don't like doing that, but there's no other solution. Except from on the old fingering. Which isn't solution, even C.P. Bach writes about that, the fact that that fingering is not uh, being replaced by the new so-called new fingering that his father invented with the use of the first finger. The only thing is, it gives a very pronounced articulation. Then I should do it actually everywhere. Oh. In fact, it sounds not so bad doing that. consider doing that and again that's not applying something that was old-fashioned in that day at that time uh, many many musicians still play it like that it's also a natural um, evolution of, of playing if you ask a child to play a scale it will never invent the 
first finger, the thumb going under underneath the hand, it will use the alt fingering. And what li I like the most is that this passage, which otherwise I would have to practice, I know you don't have to practice anymore. It goes for itself. Also here, the E, making it long enough. I know it's stressy because, because you have to jump, but or you have to reposition your hand, but as long as possible. Also here, just a jump from three to three. It's no problem. Because you have an accent. So by the fingering, by default, so to say, it happens. You don't have to think about it anymore. But, and never. So if you give a concert and you have really a bad night of sleep and you have a headache, that articulation, that phrase will happen whatever. Also here I end with the third finger if I'm correct. And then go further with the third finger, it's no problem. That's okay. Here fourth finger in the right hand. I go to the third finger, so I use a little bit of old fingering, which is not really true because I don't have an option. Because I don't go to five, four, five, which would be really awkward. Here I do it actually also old finger. And then. Left hand, just jump, soft release, and then the left hand, four, I take five here, can you see it? Yeah, over there. So a fourth finger, and I stay with the fourth finger, which is a little bit difficult here with the F sharp. But I, you need to do that because you have to hold the A until here and then go to the D sharp and I take that with the second finger. I will not take that with the first finger because if I take that with the first finger, I have to go deeper into the keys and then I'm stuck with my second finger here on the C, which I have to press really high in the keys. And that's really uncontrollable. It's possible, but it's not beautiful. Of course, again, on the harpsichord it's easier, but also on the harpsichord, on the, even on the piano, it's, it's not the position you want to have your first finger in. And most of, also on the harpsichord with, with older keyboards or copies of keyboards, the keys are narrower, so you don't have much place there. So, you know, we really would like to stay as much on the front of the keys as possible. So F sharp five, which is actually no problem, might be on the, grand piano a little bit because there the distance is a little bit bigger but even there it's no problem go to uh, D sharp if I would play it on a Steinway grand however I could imagine going there to with a temp on the first uh, on the on the D sharp and doing this but that depends on the instrument but here's no problem on a smaller keyboard like like the Saxon keyboard and third finger here and then my hand position um, you can see it. It never left a natural position. I have to spread, so I have to widen the fingers a little bit here. But that's actually part of the inventions. Bach is really pushing everything to the limit. Not everything, but within the, within the limits, to the limits. This is kind of difficulty. But my hand position is, is okay. And here I have a fourth fifth finger here, fourth finger, no other solution. Yeah, I, I could go to three, but then there is a tension between these two fingers and I don't like that. So the fourth finger is in the natural position to play on the B. And then the, the G has to be re repeated, so I just replace, simple, replace that, simple as that. Again, the same thing, 
second finger, third finger is in the position for the B, and then I will switch to the previous uh, view and don't get seasick now. I'll go up like this. You would not imagine how I sit here with a wooden beam just in front of me, but it works great. So here I end with the, on the G with the fifth finger and I continue on the F sharp also with my fifth finger, which is a little bit tricky because you can, um, you can imagine a gap there, but not too much. The gap would be there only for articulation and only because of the reason that you have a strong beat on the F sharp or the F sharp is on a strong beat. So just before that, in order to enhance that a little bit, there is a little gap. And jumping from the G to the F sharp is not the same as from G to F. And it sounds as a very silly detail, but it's, it's really, it's, it's a difference because I have to lift my finger. And that's not what I want to do if I want to make this gap very smooth and very small. But that we have to make a kind of camouflage for. Also here, fourth finger is in position. I just go to three on the F sharp and hold it because the F, the longer F sharp must be held. Same here, fifth finger, two. Always the same. So, and then, I start here. Also here, from F sharp, a little bit too much light. The, the webcams, they have difficulties in the dynamic range of lightning. lighting. So F sharp here with five, four, three, two, and then go to five. I don't do this. Oh, on the clavichord, you hear that. I just jump again here, long note as a traverse player would do. Just breathe a little bit and give an accent. I hold the note for so a little bit of tension here, five, four in a third. It's not very common. It happens of course a lot, but you won't find that a lot in sources if you read about that. Again, here the same as at the beginning, very relaxed. And also here, the B is actually being repeated here. So this bow, it's strange actually that it's there. It's impossible to make a legato uh, to the D because the B has to be repeated, which means, which implies that the long B, the quarter note, needs to be um, needs to go up before, of course, the attack of the new B. So there is no possibility to make this legato, but probably that, that might have been the reason why, why Bach or a copyist, I don't know where this bow come from, comes from, that it is there just to pay attention to the fact that you don't do this. Which is actually, if you play this, it doesn't feel unnatural and it doesn't sound unnatural. You have to replace your hand and by default, so to say, you have an accent on the D. But that's not what Bach wants or that copyists want. I think it's Bach. And because he, I think, it's, I'm just thinking out loud because he knows that you have to go up there sooner than you. He wants you to go and that it sounds natural, but he wants this. So we're going to keep it as long as we can. And this is also something worth mentioning. I will pull the score a little bit to you here. So three, two, 
I will not do one two because it doesn't feel right on the clavier chords on any historical keyboard actually. So I'm going to do the fifth finger on the F and I just replace my fifth finger. And also I stay with the second finger on the G sharp. Three, two, again the same thing, right hand. Five, five. And here also I make just a jump. We have the same passage, I think, in the beginning, somewhere, just jump. Soft release, and that, that's really very easy to play. Hold the B as long as you can, because it will give you the, the space there too. See, as long as this continues, you can do in the left hand what you want. Just repeat the same fingering, same pattern. Same. It is difficult because you have the long G. So it's also again the crossing of the voices like in the beginning. And I want to keep that G. Which is actually not easy. That would be a parallel fifth. Also here, the F sharp must be hold. But you hear it. So, there are some passages that really are difficult. I can I just check the chat if there is something you... The bow, oh, Charles writes, the bow is present in the autograph, facsimile, I'm looking at. Yeah. So you have... And you know by which one you're looking at now because you have the... I've made that, uh, that video on Wednesday and that's the reason it's in my head now, you have four manuscripts. You have two by Bach and two copies. You have the Friedemann Bach copy, 1720, and you have the 1723 copy with a lot of additional ornaments later, uh, presumably by Bach, but we are, they are not sure. And then you have the two copies by students. So, and the students' copies, for those of you who haven't seen that video, is really interested and it's in, it's in the book of Neumann. Although you, you should check that video. Right? It's released on Wednesday, I think, on the Bach ornamentation of the Symphonias. But in Neumann, that book, that book is really gold. He makes the assumption that those copies by students actually might um, give an indication how they heard Bach played Symphonias and the inventions and just make cha the changes they made might just be in the kind of... Uh, uh, replica of, of the performance of Bach himself, so that would be great. That's shall we try it from the uh, the one published by Dover? Yeah, okay. I don't know that that Dover has published manuscripts, so thank you for mentioning that. Or maybe at the beginning, I have the uh, that's actually also Dover, that's the first Bach edition 19th century, it's quite good actually. But it follows just one, one source, I think. I, I should know, maybe. Shall we try it from the beginning and then we go to the 11th? Okay, again, I play slower than I imagined this piece. Oh, I'm just jumping from her desk. It's one question. Um, a Greek. One question. On what pitch the strings are. Oh, that's my clavichord is at 406. Clavichords were a little bit of a little bit free from standard pitch, and the pitch of a clavichord is 
decided by the scaling of the strings. So you have you will find a lot of different pitches. I can go up to, to until 4 or 10, 4, 15 is technically different as, as possible, but the instrument will sound very hard and very uh, percussion like. I can go lower, which if I would go to 4 or 4 or 400 even, then the sound becomes a little bit more sweet. If you sometimes hear remarks on, on YouTube or Facebook on the sound of my instrument, I would it would be easy for me to tune it lower. Technically, this, the scaling of the strings would become uh, a little bit thinner compared to the, the height of the, of the pitch of the instrument. And so this, the, the sound will be a little bit more sweet, which people often like. But uh, it would give me much less possibilities. So it's 406. For me, it's at the perfect pitch. Okay, let's try. C sharp. Okay, that's not that's okay for the first time. So again, if you have not seen the first uh, sessions we did on and we've talked there on fingering a lot, so taking the time to play it slowly as I did my making the fingerings and going through the piece with you now, also very slowly enables you to take of gives you much more time in reading the notes. And playing music is nothing more than being able to read very fast and feed your motoric system because it's not up to the fingers to to play the notes it's up to your brains to direct your fingers so that the faster you learn the notes to read the notes and actually to see the patterns because that's what you need to do in certainly in polyphonic music it's very difficult for sight reading because it's so complicated it's much different than than than, than the motor sonata for instance except the ones where he uses polyphonic techniques and so but just very slowly playing very slowly having this fingering and actually also learning to read the fingering with because that's what that's what you're doing you're not only reading the notes you're reading your own fingering that um, enables you to play the piece rather fast and some might might be faster than others but that's it really in general what's happening so let's try this again
matches like here, I'm playing too fast. I, if I, it would be in a contract, I would manage to do, but there would be a panic system that would be um, awakened. And that's not what we are doing now, we are practicing. Well, I have to feel very relaxed and certainly in my reading. But of course, what's the, what the, one of the dangers of not the danger is that you are getting um, that you feel taken by the flow of the music and that you're starting to perform and to interpret and to and to look for 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 things uh, of of course of performances of performance and that's sometimes difficult also for me to have this discipline to stay in practicing mode. strange bow because then we have to do it here also I think it's just that it can be just a mistake because here you have a, a, a tie actually which ties the C but it's impossible to do that fingerings is really really important so doing both and typically in if I would start tomorrow with practicing this piece there would be information last so if, if I would play this for 10 minutes or for 15 minutes that would enable me to play this piece actually in a way that I could make a YouTube recording I wouldn't say play it on, on stage because that's something else then you have to implement or also kind of buffering that things might happen while performing but if i would go to sleep and stand up in the morning and play it 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 would be very um, i would have to restudy it like i do now i did now but it would go faster until after a few days um, the visual of the notation really sinks and then the piece is okay and stays for a much longer time okay what would you like to do? Go me um, that I would go start with Symphonia 11, or that we just play some of the other um, Symphonias? Just let me know in the chat. Just kind of delay of 10, 10, 50 seconds, but it's not too too much. And then we can, if we go, if we would just play, I will make the fingering of Symphonia number 11, and we will go through that um, next session together in detail as we did now with the Symphonia number 10 and otherwise I just start with the 11th as we do usual Symphonia 11 okay it's 1-0 I think we continue then Carol was the fastest fingering please okay I'm always scared I'm a little bit afraid that I really um, I'm very boring when I'm making fingerings and you fall all asleep, but maybe it's just that what you want to see. 
Uh, Costas is here as well. Just finished composing, perhaps. <laughs> okay, Charles. We're going for the very beautiful, actually, 11th Symphonia. I haven't done touched it yet. So not even divided the left and the right hand. So we have to do this from scratch. First two or three lines. It's good readable, okay. So I just, I just start playing as I would normally do. And the first thing is just to make the division of the left and the right hand. Okay, that's cool by Bach. <laughs> he must have been thinking how to make this difficult. So we have to take over the left hand. Yeah, okay. Obviously in the left hand. Left hand. Left hand. Left hand. It sometimes depends on where my hand position is there, so I Okay, it doesn't seem to be a difficulty. There's two exceptions, one first finger on the, on the upper note and the fifth finger. Two things CPE Bach writes you not to do. Okay, let's start with that. Again, there are possibilities at the beginning. The simpler the, the, the texture, the more possibilities you have. And what you typically would, what I typically search for is having the strong fingers on the strong beat. The first finger on the G works fine. The only reason I would hesitate is that I need my fifth finger here to assist the right hand in this one. So this is it's like a backward puzzle. And if I can keep my hand in position, I will. Here, obviously with four, five, and I just make the jump. Second finger. I need to have my third finger to have my fourth finger here. And then my second finger automatically goes to the B flat. Don't take it with your first. Because you have to turn your hand and that's not good for sound projection. And also if you do that, if you divide the weight, and we've, we've been talking on that, eh? you have to assist with your wrist here, really. Um, let me see if I can turn the webcam a little bit that so you can see my right hand better, like that. So. You have to assist, where are we here? So the second finger is really out of your hand position. If I will do it here. So if I would turn my hand to you, to you, normally the second finger is like that, but it has to spread and it has absolutely no support from the wrist. And this might sound as a, as a ridiculous detail, but in clavichord playing and also for harpsichord playing and, and certainly for piano playing, um, as long as you stay away from the sustaining pedal that can help you, but you will hear it. Uh, it, it makes a difference in sound. Here on the... Listen what happened. It's difficult for me to... I'm so used to this instrument to play notes wrong, but you hear what you need that arm weight so i go the only possibility is 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 just to cover my wrist a little bit to the b flat and return 
and like we have discussed in the F minor Sinfonia, you remember? I think it was you, Charles, who asked me that in the, in, during the last session of the partita. The wrist makes a huge difference. Also here. And a very small movement. I sometimes hear people saying, yeah, but it's documented, it's documented that Bach, you couldn't see his uh, hands move and that's probably very, sh very true. And um, although be always careful with, with just one source or one quote, you, it's so difficult to reconstruct what's really the meaning behind it. But I can imagine that he was playing very, very, with a very steady, not moving hands at all. Jacques Van Oetmes, my former teacher, was a champion in that as well. But he did make these movements, but you didn't see him. You won't see it if I'm doing it. I'm not doing this. And certainly not with your elbow. But listen what the difference now. I'm now without. And now with movement. And I'm not trying to play one passage more beautiful than the other. It's just by the small wrist movement. That's everything. Without. Now with. That is a gigantic difference. So imagine that to be implied on all voices, on all notes. And that's what you have to learn on the clavicle. On an organ, actually, also. And I'm so happy, I'm so blessed that I had that teacher because that, that that were the exercises I had to do two years. You cannot imagine. If you know the big organ in Harlem in the Bavo, the big Schnitke organ in Alkmaar, those two organs I've played on the first two years when I was in Amsterdam, only this kind of exercises on the principle eight of the direct positive. Not the ones with the plenum sound. And duos and trios on the pedal. But I am thankful eternally for to Jacques Van Oetmeister for having teach me that. Also here, left hand. I go a little bit with my wrist because it needs assistance to the first thing. And it has to bend in with the movement of your right hand. Also, so actually you're doing this and this movement goes you, you could write a slur actually that this arm movement goes like this also here I go to the fourth the fourth finger needs assistant why because it's a higher note and I don't want to make you afraid of that it's so complicated but in detail on that level it is it is not complicated if you just manage this movement and just practice what we what we've been saying last week and slowly you will implement it and it's always the same thing your ears are your guidance and you know what that's something i can say now that's People are often saying, yeah, you have to play fast because of faster. You have to play in a way that you feel this tension going to the other bar. But it's not the tempo on its own. It's, it's the movement. It's more important. But with this kind of cantabile, you can play as slow as you want. And you will never have the feeling that the music stops. I show you. It's only by the movement of, of, of the wrist, division of arm weight. It sounds unbelievable the wrist like that. And there are other factors, of course, in, that, that comes to play, but that's, that's the main factor.
okay, we were, we were making fingerings actually. Here it's tricky. Third finger on the B flat because I need the second finger on the F sharp and the first finger on the. So the this right hand takes over from the left hand here. So if you wonder if this is um, meant for two keyboards, it's not. It, you can play it on key, two keyboards, of course, and you have a free G, but it's by no means. Um, I don't think meant for two keyboards. I take the third finger here and five and two again. Take my keep my hand position, not like that, like this. Second finger. Okay, and then we come to a tricky passage. What to do with the trill? Obviously, the best fingers to trill are the third and the second finger. There's all the plays because left hand is assisting the right hand here. But am I taking now also the G in the right and left hand or not? Because Obviously Bach wants to make a long trill because he has a Nachschlag here. But it's, quite, it's, it's almost impossible to do like this. To take over that note in the first finger, the sort of G, and then play the beautiful ending of the trill. That's not possible. So, either I start with 4-3, Then I can take over, but my thumb is free, freer than it would be when I would play with three and two. Let's try. No, of course, I would need my first finger on the A when I start with three, two. When I start with four, three, the A will be played with two. But those are not the, the most um, the best trill fingers, I don't know if that's correct English. But... So, what to do about it? Or oh, I play with 3 2 and I take the G in the left hand, which is not possible, I see, because the G is tied to the, to the next bar. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no other solution than to trill with four and three. Or to make a short trill. Mm -hmm. Just practice. And also here, is, so this little bit of movement of the wrist helps, helps this trill. I don't know if you see it. But that's, those passages are difficult. I have to think about that next week. I will tell you next week what my, what maybe I, I, I stay with this solution. I don't know. It's, it's a difficult bar. We start here. Here with five now, uh, four, sorry, no, yeah, four, and go five, four. Also, something that you won't find in these sources, but it's obvious here that Bach means that. Wants to have that because the fifth finger is very. So, four on the E flat, five on the D, B. Second finger on the G and then going up. Okay. One, 
count three and I have to go to the fifth finger so not going to the second finger and then so Martin if you do not like a 4-3 trill why not 4-2 with 4-3 for the turn let's try that yeah I have to jump over my second finger then Yeah, it, let's try that. Mm. Then I have to stop the trill, which is the possibility maybe. But then I can use my third finger as well. Let's try. No. 4 2 is, of course, much easier. Let's think about that this week. Uh, if you have other suggestions, I'll read it. Just the fourth finger, hopefully we can keep that. Second finger on the B flat is okay. So one, three, five, second finger. Again, I will not go to the first finger, finger because I have to turn my hand. My hand is completely out of position now. The second finger, it stays just in the, the right line of the keyboard. Okay. Second finger. Here I go with my first finger on the B flat. There's no other solution. Just go to the first finger. And this what's the difficulty here in the left hand you have a B flat and B flat with the two notes in between so you would say of course you just go to the end of the keys of the front of the keys not just you know what I mean inside of the keys but the F and the D are really difficult I, I, I would I've played passages like that just by re going back with my hand if you never played um, a clavichord and only harpsichord it might sound it might um, be weird that I'm talking about that because on a harpsichord this is okay to do once and a clavichord is really difficult you don't, you don't make sound here Okay, but let's see what we do next week. Okay, it's 10.30. Actually, it was a quite intense session for me to Symphonia 10. I'm glad we had to have to, had the um, chance to discuss this in detail. And then with the Symphonia 11 started. So again, I will finish this next week. And then we're heading for the end of the Symphonias. So, <clears throat> the group I was talking about in the beginning, Carol, is the um, on Facebook. I have you have the my page, Authentic Sound, which is I don't know how they call that brand page or fan page. I don't know. It's different than a personal page. And you have on the, on the personal Facebook side, you can make groups like you have the clavichord group or the piano forte group or whatever different kind of groups. And I have created an authentic sound group just uh, in, in private for reason that some things I will, really would like to have tested or to would I like to ask you. And if you would like to participate in that group, um, I think you can apply for membership on Facebook. And if not, just let me know. And I changed that, that you can. Um, the recordings, I, as I was telling at the beginning, we have changed our microphone setup just to ask your opinion about that. Um, plans we develop for Authentic Sound for next year. Uh, sometimes it's very nice to have feedback on all kinds of things. So, And it might be a nice group in the future, just like we're hanging out now here. We can hang out in that Facebook group as well. And 
would be also easier for me to answer some of your questions more directly. Now the feed of Authentic Sound YouTube is coming in uh, my Gmail social account, but also with Facebook, it's getting, it's really getting a lot. And so on that Facebook private group, it, it would be manageable for me and for Anya much more. And um, we can get to know each other a little bit better. Who knows what, what leads that to. So that's the Facebook group I was talking about. Um, okay, the explica yeah, so it's a brief, yeah, that's true, Charles, too, but that's the ending here, so you can, it's possible, but I can uh, imagine also that Bach wants to have this ending um, combined with the trill. It makes sense, if you would play a solo instrument, you would do it probably like that. Um, I have to, to think about that. Okay, so next week again, live session practicing hours. This week I will be live streaming the partitas and something I didn't mention probably at the beginning of the live stream of the partitas, the rehearsals and the recordings of the partitas will be live streamed. So again, I won't repeat what I said at the beginning. It's great to have you there. You uh, really get my concentration and, and, and focus on a higher level but I also will read uh, um, when after making the recordings Anya is copying the chat and I will read what you're saying then it's really it, it can be very helpful for me to have your opinion from the other side it won't be recorded with these microphones but we will set up a good uh, system so it would be great to have your ideas at the other side of the microphones for that particular session and so that's actually what we are setting up for the partitas. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this session and we certainly will see each other very soon again. And don't hesitate to leave me your comments and suggestions if you would like me to change things or you have ideas, it would be wonderful. And for now, I wish you all a very good evening or a good day or afternoon, depending on where you are and see you very soon again. Bye.